This is the new Pulsar Export QS, a mechanical keyboard designed not just for gamers, but aimed more to catering to the productivity needs of streamers and content creators. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but Pulsar used to actually create gaming keyboards back in the day, but they were never anything to rave and rant about until now. This is a refreshing piece of equipment that I am sure a ton of creators are going to fall in love with, but it may be missing a few things that gamers are looking for. Let's get right into it. Now, the unboxing experience is a pretty good one. The inside is plastered with all types of drawings and doodles, really giving off that creator vibe. Sitting right on top of the keyboard, we're greeted with a soft velvet-like pouch, which is a pretty cool addition, especially if you're someone who plans on traveling with this keyboard. Now, in the top right box, we have two white braided USB A to C cables, which we'll be using for power. And in the top left, we have a box containing a not-so-basic keycap puller, which is actually pretty cool. It's not your run-of-the-mill plastic junk. I really like this. Next, we have some spare Ice V2 switches. And then we have our switch puller sporting the infamous Pulsar blue colorway. And finally, we have the keyboard itself. Sporting a full black and white theme, we have a 10 keyless layout with 88 keys in total, plus your volume knob and quick switch buttons. Now, the keycaps are a double shot PBT with no shine through legends. Their main function keycaps being all black, popping nicely off this white background. In the top left, we have a large Pulsar logo. Next to the logo, you got the words Export QS, first edition, quick switch technology in smaller font. Now, this is take it or leave it for me. It doesn't bother me as I kind of enjoy branding, but I can see some people having an issue with this. I mean, it makes sense though from a marketing standpoint, because I'll tell you something right now. When someone catches this keyboard sitting on their favorite creator's desk, they for sure as shit ain't gonna ask who makes that keyboard. Now this keyboard sits in a full CNC aluminum case and it comes in at 360 millimeters long by 163 millimeters wide and 35 millimeters high on the back end. And it's a little over 3.2 pounds in weight. Flipping the keyboard over is what really surprised me, as we have most of the back plating cut out, exposing the foam and PCB. Now we have a gasket mounted build and a full hot swap PCB, which allows you to swap between three and five pin switches. And this keyboard is sold stock with Kale Box Ice Mint V2 switches, which I was pleasantly surprised to see. Now, I was shocked to say the least when I first heard the way this keyboard sounded. With that underplate being mostly missing, I for sure thought this keyboard was going to sound super hollow, but I was dead wrong. The foam does a great job, and this board sounds pretty damn good in my opinion. The gaskets do a good job as well, as we have a decent flex here while typing, and the switch choice was a solid one, as these ice mints are such great switches, especially when it comes to gaming. So now on to the big question that most gamers out there are asking, and that's where are the whole effect switches? Where's that rapid trigger function? And you're not getting that with this keyboard. This is definitely aimed more for the creator aspect. Now, I don't know why Polestar decided to not add that to the keyboard, but I really think they're just going for a niche market that hasn't really been tapped into too much when it comes to this quick switch option. Now, remember, this is a version one of this keyboard, and I'm sure Pulsar will definitely drop a version two if the sales are pretty decent with their first kind of comeback into the keyboard game. Now, they didn't, you know, forget about the gamer though. They gave you a solid switch option. This keyboard does have anti-ghosting and end key rollover that you could turn off, by the way. You could turn the end key rollover off by hitting function plus or minus, though I don't know why you would turn that off, but you do have the option. So they did think of the gamer to some aspect, but again, this is definitely geared more towards the creator. So moving on to where this board really shines, the bread and butter, the quick switch. Okay, so please excuse the mess. I know it looks crazy in here, but this is the best way that I can show you guys how good this quick switch actually works. Now on the back of the board, you have four connectivity options on your left-hand side. The first two ports are USB-C ports and the last two ports are USB-A ports. So this purple and white coiled cable is going into PC1, which is my main rig that I'm on now. And the, the second cable right here is going into my second PC. Now, this cable didn't reach my PC because it's way behind me in the studio space here. So I was able to go out and pick up a USB-A extender for like five to eight bucks. And I wanted to see if it would work and it works flawlessly. 
which is a good thing to note for people with bigger places that wanna run the cable even further. So the last port here is my USB-A or my second to last port. And I went ahead and I put on my uh, V3ES wireless mouse. The last port here, you can go ahead and throw something like a USB microphone or even a gaming headset in if you want, or another mouse, whatever you wanna do. And that will also transfer over to the second rig, which is huge. So it's really easy now that you're all plugged in and set up and ready to go. Uh, you can see here on my main PC, I'm plugged in currently. My mouse is working. I could say hello, right? Now I wanna swap over to the rig behind me. So if you look at the top right, you have two buttons. The first one being PC1 that we're on now, and the right one's gonna be PC2. So if I hit this, you could see right behind me automatically, I'm on the second PC, no problem. Mouse works, highlight, delete here, and I'm over there, no problem. Now I wanna swap back. All I have to do is hit PC1, and then you could see we are back that quick. It's really fast and it works like it's perfect. Now, below the space bar on the left-hand side, you're gonna have an indicator letting you know that you're on PC1. When you're on PC2, the right side will light up, which is really cool. Now you can control the brightness of that as well by simply holding function and B, and that will change uh, the brightness of your indicator. The RGB lighting is vibrant and it complements the white case beautifully. Now you can control it directly from the keyboard without the need of any software. You go ahead and adjust your brightness simply by holding the function key and pressing up or down on the arrows. And you can change the speed of the lights by left or right arrows. Alternatively, you do have the option to hold the function key and use your volume knob to adjust your brightness. Now the keyboard also allows you to save up to two different macros, but if you want some more advanced remapping, you can use third-party software like QMK, VIA, and more. So this keyboard is set to release on May 26th around 5 p.m. PST, and it's gonna retail for $299. Yes, that is $300, which I know may seem steep to some, but it really depends on who could benefit from this quick switch option. Look, if you're a gamer looking to get on one up on the competition with a gaming keyboard, you could definitely skip this board as it's gonna be your run of the mill gaming keyboard. But if you are a content creator looking to save yourself time and just give you a little bit more ease of access, let's say you're maybe streaming with two PCs, or maybe you're someone who creates content on a Windows machine, but then you're used to editing on a MacBook, this will save you time and just make your life way easier. I know myself as a content creator, if something saves me time and makes my life easier, I'm willing to pay a little bit more for it. Now also, Polestar kind of has a lock on this little niche part of the uh, you know, community here with what they're creating. This is like the Go XLR of keyboards right now. So I really think Polestar knows what they're doing here. We're gonna find out if people actually buy this very, very soon. I'm really curious if you're gonna be picking one up. Let me know down below in the comments for sure. And if you are a content creator, down below in the comments, say hello so I can check out some of your content. No one collabs anymore on YouTube. You notice that? Like it's like end of year collabs only. I'm down to collab. You could hit me up, all right? Um, that's it for me. Uh, if you guys are new to the channel, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed the video, smash the like button. And I do have the membership program open as well. If you want to support the channel with a little extra juice, that is always much appreciated, but not needed. That's it. Most importantly, you guys stay safe out there. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.